All right, hey, what's happening, uh, gamers? How's it going? Hope everyone's day is going great today. So we're gonna be looking at Mary Jane in Fortnite. So feel free to add me. Um, I'm Kwife on the Epic account. Um, you guys can definitely add me on here. Um, Luke's uh, friend thing is full, but mine is not. So uh, anyone who wants to add me, feel free. It's Kwife, so really easy to add me. And, uh, yeah, let me just make sure we got public, online, online play. Okay, awesome. So, we're going to do Team Rumble, and, uh, yep, anyone who wants to, um, add me is, uh, feel free. So, great to see you guys in the chat, and, uh, Luke is, uh, he, uh, has only slept, like, a few hours today. He was out with me all day, and he was up all night last night, um, editing, so he's hardly had any sleep at all. So he is sleeping at the moment. So um, that's why we're doing, uh, yeah. That's why we're doing this. Are we playing Tomb Raider? Uh, I don't know. Is there a new Tomb Raider game out? I didn't know that. So uh, awesome. I'm in your party. Awesome, Peter Parker. Good to see you, Tom. Peter Parker, Master DVD. Random alts, uh, Melena, uh, Dylan, OH, Jonathan, Shadow, ba Banana Boy, Michael, and um, Stuart, Keylock, and uh, Sammy Samurai King, Dylan, and Jenny Warrior, Outneko Games, uh, Tom. Uh, okay, so if anyone wants to join, again, uh, my name is KYF1 here, and it's super easy to, yeah, super easy to add me. I don't know why this one person I can't really add. Every time I try to add them, it won't let me. So, yeah, we're going to look at... This is the new skin of Mary Jane. I should probably, like, show it off or something. So... Um... Okay, here we go. So, here's Mary Jane... Uh, here's her cool, uh, um, electric guitar. Very cool. And she's got electric guitar that she uses as a weapon. So Luke actually bought me this, um, today so I could show her off. Um, Luke was telling me that this is actually Mary Jane in the alternate Earth comics in which she and she was the lead singer and write, songwriter of a band, which she and, uh, Gwen Stacy um, are in a band together, and in this universe, I guess Peter Parker is no longer around, or he passed away, I don't know, but there she is, and there's Green Goblin, if you guys still want to get Green Goblin, it's pretty cool, and um, I believe someone did gift me Green Goblin before, it was gl Glider, so, yeah. So yeah, she's really cool, and uh, we're gonna play as her today, so. Alright, I'm just gonna be like running around building forts and stuff, so I mean, usually like Luke talks about everything on his mind, so. Alright, you almost finished chapter one of Deltarune. Awesome, Dylan, that's great. I'm joining you guys soon. Awesome, Dylan. Hello, Master DVD. Um, we were gonna have Lego Star Wars stream, but, uh, I just, like, kind of went over it. Um, we're not doing it because Luke has had hardly any sleep today. So, like, he's had, like, three hours of sleep in, like, the last 36 hours. So, yeah, he can't really do the stream. <laughs> also, um, we, you know, we just did two Kirby streams. Luke and I were out all day today. Um, life happens, so the S Lego Star Wars has moved to tomorrow. Um, but so, um, yep, yeah, Lego Star Wars is tomorrow. I mean, there's nothing wrong with him. He just needs to sleep. Like, there's nothing wrong with him. Like, just like when you guys are tired at night at 10, 10 o'clock at night, you guys are okay. You just have to sleep. <laughs> like, he just hasn't slept yet. So, he'll be okay after he sleeps. I mean, everyone needs to sleep at some point. Mm. 
Um, I will pray for your mom and brother. Definitely Gabriel. Yep. Oh, they've been sick for a while? Of course, Gabrielle. I will pray for them. Hey, Sammy Samurai King. Actually, we had a nice day today. Um, of course. Of course I'll pray for them. Alright, guys. So, we're gonna get into Team Rumble and, uh, so yeah, uh, we had to go out today. Uh, let's see. What do we do today? Um, did anyone have an exciting Thursday today? We went out uh, today and um, went to get a storage locker so uh, I can eventually make the downstairs like a, a music area and get all the boxes out of there. We have tons of boxes from all other places we live. And we also went to the bank to open like a CD because we're trying to save up for a house eventually. So that's what we did today. We had a really nice day out. I had a nice time with Luke. Um, we were going to get ice cream, but we ended up having a spider ended up in our car on the way home. So I ended up killing it with our bank information booklet. <laughs> so that was interesting. And then we did two videos of the Kirby Forgotten Land and... Um, uh, the day before I made fried rice and Luke helped me a lot in the kitchen today he was helping me do a ton of dishes so yeah we've had a we had an extremely long day even before we ended up streaming so so yeah here's Mary Jane and um, this is the new character Luke also has Mary Jane on his account so you know whenever he does another Fortnite stream I don't know if he's going to... I don't think he's going to do an official showing off Mary Jane stream. This is it. So you guys can see what Mary Jane looks like right now. Uh, this is her guitar. And yeah, so Luke asked me to do the stream of Mary Jane. So here it is. Um, Luke probably will not do another stream showing off Mary Jane. So here you guys go. Here's Mary Jane. She looks pretty cool. Um... And she's got a cool, um, you know, Spider-Man t-shirt and stuff like that, so. Very cool, guys. Very cool. So let's, uh, I don't know. I guess I'll try to get some materials or something. So thank you so much, Luke, for, um, gifting me the skin. I really appreciate that. Mm. Bad things have been happening in Virginia. I'm sorry about that. Um, uh, why does she have a guitar? She's the lead singer of a band. She's uh, in a comic book in which she's the lead singer of a band uh, with her and G Gwen Stacy are in a band that they do together. It's a alternate earth in which they were rivals for Peter's heart, but I believe Peter ended up dying in that world so yeah I think that um yeah so that's what Luke was telling me before that I believe Peter was gone in that world or something so um and those of you guys who have read the comic will probably you guys can correct me or something but um yeah Luke was telling me uh, she is the lead singer of a band where her and Gwen Stacy have a band in this uh, comic book world it's an alternate earth this is based off of a comic that's an alternate Earth uh, comic. And this is what she looks like in that comic book. Hey guys, hello everyone. So. Yeah, so. <laughs> I don't know. Luke usually talks about his day. He really enjoys talking about, you know, hanging out with me and going out and stuff. It was very sweet that Luke likes to talk about hanging out with me so much. Um, oh, thank you so much. Oops, sorry. I didn't mean to do that. Sorry, I messed up. I, ah, darn it. That was one, what I meant to do. I pressed the wrong button. No. Oops, sorry. Sorry about that, guys. Oops. Oops. 
Oopsies. Sorry for crushing, uh, destroying your uh, car there, guys. All right, there's Spider-Man. So we got a lot of people as Spider-Man here. So that's pretty cool. Oops, sorry. Um, okay. Okay. All right, thanks guys for trying to build a little wall around me. I appreciate that. So yeah, we went out, uh, you know, we, we had to do some bank stuff and, um, oh, the lady, uh, actually the lady at the, uh, the, the storage place was really nice. Um, super sweet and, uh, actually was quoting one of my favorite movies, which is, uh, Johnny Five, Short Circuit, the movie, which she was like, oh my gosh, like, I love that, saying how much she loves that movie, which is really interesting, because, um... That was kind of random, but kind of cool. I love, that's one of my favorite movies too, so. So yeah, we had it, um, basically we have tons of stuff in our basement that we can't, we used to live in a, uh, place that was way bigger. No, the guy with the car is like, no, I don't want, you, you hit my car last time. I didn't mean to. Wow, this looks like we're going through a military, uh, place here. Well, obviously, Amber, obviously. Obviously, Amber. Hey, Spider-Man. I really need some more emojis. Thanks, Spider-Man. So, I feel like, um, let's see. Um, I guess we can try to go up here. I don't know. Try to make a cool fort here. Oops. Why did I, I ran out of stuff? I ran out of stuff to build a fort. All right. Oops. Um. Where am I? Oh my gosh! Darn it! So good to see you guys in the chat. Hello, Chad. Um, hey, Peter Parker, how's it going? Uh, I don't think I've seen the tornado. I'm glad you guys got to get, go out today. I'm, I'm can't imagine how monotonous streaming and editing can get. Um, I don't think that Luke minds the streaming and editing. Like he could do it all the time. Like I don't think it bothers him. Um, I like to go, like, I used to go out, like, when money wasn't, like, an issue, when whatever, like, everything was going well with YouTube. I mean, I don't want to say how much I went out, but I was just super stressed about YouTube. I would go out to the movies every week, at least, when we were, like, really successful. Sometimes I'd go out, like, twice a week the movies um just on my own because I just needed to de-stress like I was there was so much like there was so much like hype for everything that we needed to do like I, I like there was so much high expectation to have all these views and stuff that I needed to like I needed to like unwind somehow um, so yeah, I would go out to the movies, like, a lot. Like, I would see, like, every new movie. And I tried reviewing some of them, but sometimes I'd have to watch some of them twice before I could actually, like, review them. Um. Oh, I don't think. So my, my... Great. My, uh, my thing I was making didn't really work, I guess. I was trying to make a, a fort, but it didn't really work, I guess. Aw. 
My fort just doesn't work anymore here. This feels so bad. But yeah, I don't get to go to the, I don't go to the movies ever. I don't I can't. It's a well, obviously because of the pandemic, but also the movies are really expensive. Like I cannot afford that at all. I don't I don't go out ever. Also, like now, um, well, even when I was uh, even um years ago, when I used to go out to the movies a lot, I always would just. I, I would wait for months for Luke to go be able to go out with me like one time because, um, yeah, he was always work. He was working uh, really hard back then. Now it's just like the the pressures of YouTube have made the, crunch things so bad where he's so stressed, working so hard that I can't even I can't bring myself to be like, okay, you've been up for like. 30 hours working and you're stressed to the bone. I'm gonna go out to the movies. Like, I can't bring myself to do that. Uh, I would have to be like, I don't know, I just feel like I would have to be like, uh, be heartless to do that, um, personally. So, yeah, now I don't really go out because I'm just so, like, like, oh, there we go. I think if Luke would- oh great, I used- I got killed by a hug. I think like if Luke would take more breaks on his own, then I probably would, but I- I don't know. He's just- he has to work really hard, so. Yeah, I mean it's really not, um, recently like, um, you know, even today, like, uh, he would have probably pushed himself to stay awake, but he was like, well, we actually did really well on the last couple streams, so, you know. I keep trying to make a cool um, fort, but it doesn't like it's not working. It keeps getting shot down. Oh! Oh my gosh! Okay, there. Alright, well, it's the beginnings of kind of a cool fort, I guess. Like, even when things were going really well on YouTube, it was really stressful. Like, I always remember YouTube being stressful, like, the entire time. Now, it's just, like, uh, even more stressful since, uh, they made things even really worse. But, yeah, I mean, like, it's not stressful in that I get to hang out with all you guys, and we have a lot, we get to, like, even today, like, you know, I mean, it was, it's always kind of, like, the lady at the... It's kind of cool when we, like, go out and, I don't know, it's like, <laughs> it would be like working for S.H.I.E.L.D., uh, not that being a YouTuber is as cool as working for S.H.I.E.L.D., but, but like, being a YouTuber is kind of like working for S.H.I.E.L.D., but you never get to go home, like, you're always on the S.H.I.E.L.D. helicarrier all the time. You never get to leave. Um, And so nobody really knows what you're doing at Shield. Like you just work, you just work with Shield. You know, you nobody has any idea. And then like, you know, once in a while, like today, like when we got to go out and stuff, it's like, oh, we could. The lady who was, you know, getting us the storage locker was like, and it was like just a small storage locker, really inexpensive. I just have to like. Um, get some of my stuff out of the house because it's just like, I was surprised at how cheap it was. It was like, oh, that's cheap. It's like, wow. That's like less than like a few subscriptions for like, you know, Netflix and a couple other things combined. So it's like, oh, okay, this is really not that expensive. But yeah, like we finally, like the lady was kind of, I don't want to say swooning, but she was just like, 
oh, she's like, you guys work online, like, with, like, game companies and stuff. She's like, wow, that's so interesting. She was like, I never get to meet anyone that works with stuff like that. She's like, that is so cool. So, I mean, it kind of felt kind of cool, but, um, I don't know. Well, it's like, oh yeah, somebody, like, appreciate, like, somebody in the real world, like, can see, like, what we do. But then it's like, yeah, after, after that, it's just like, okay, I'm just going back to the usual. Um, which is hanging out with all you guys, so that's always awesome. What? I don't know why I keep, I keep falling from here. Like, every time I try to make a cool port, I keep, I don't, I have no idea what's going on. Kind of obsessed with my feet. So yeah, basically Luke. As soon as we, we as soon as we left the bank, Luke, um, you know he he noticed there was a tiny spider. It's like this itsy bitsy spider that's been kind of in our car for like four months, and I didn't really notice it. Every once in a while, I was like, huh, the spider's there. It's weird. So I didn't really do anything about it. Like there was no way I could get it. But then Luke is deathly afraid of spiders. Pyro, hey everyone. Oh, we got number one. Awesome. Okay. All right, if you guys want to add me, um, Chad says I can relate. Yeah, Chad has kind of a secret mission job as well because he does like anime. So probably works like, you probably work all the time on really cool animated projects for really cool companies. And you probably like never leave your house or office and then Nobody has any idea what you really do for a job. Yeah, exactly. And it's like, um, it's really, it's just like any other job, but, you know, you get to talk to people from Sega or Nintendo, and you get to really cover really cool games, like, you know, characters like Mary Jane and comic book characters, and uh, interacting with our audience is really awesome, and, you know, I think, like, interacting with our audience is more exciting, actually, than working with, I mean... Working with people from, like, big names like Ubisoft and Nintendo is really, I mean, it's really cool, honestly, um, and really fun and exciting, but, I mean, honestly, and it's our, like, we, like, yeah, I mean, we just interact with them with emails mostly, once in a while we go and visit them, or talk to them face to face, but, yeah, it's like basically, like, they're just like, do you, you know, do you want to work with us on this game, or whatever, or this new project? or not but yeah it's mainly our audience that we see every day you guys so that's the most like that's how I feel like my job is like my job is mainly entertaining my audience what is what does my audience want to see I noticed like I told Luke I said that's weird everyone's excited for Mary Jane nobody cared about Ariana Grande coming out <laughs> for um, Fortnite and yeah Luke and I were like yeah our audience is like they're they're interested in comic book characters <laughs> Uh, of course, I didn't really care about Ar Ariana Grande coming out either. If I was a super Ariana Grande fan, I would. I don't really, I don't really, I don't know. Sometimes I, I don't really. I, I do think Ariana Grande is a good singer. I just, I'm not a super fan of her. Like, I don't. There's just stuff I hear, I have heard about her that, like, I've heard, I heard she's not very nice to some of her audience and. I don't know. I just don't like mean people. That's basically why I'm not a huge fan of her. Like, I like, like, singers that I like or, like, I like Jennifer Lopez. I like, uh, Mariah Carey. I, I like them a lot. Um, but yeah, I'm not a huge fan of Ariana Grande, but I mean, if people are a fan of her, that's cool. I just, I don't really know much about her, but Anyways, so yeah, um, like I, um, I probably should know more about this character, but yeah, exactly, like, you guys were, like, people were saying 
This uh, Mary Jane is an alternate Earth Mary Jane. Uh, it, she is in a comic um, with her and Gwen Stacy. I believe Peter is deceased in this comic, but I don't know. But obviously, she's got the little heart uh, shirt for Peter Parker, so she obviously loves him. And I, as far as I know, before Luke went off to bed, he said, you know, like, um, that, that Mary Jane and Gwen Stacy were rivals for Peter's affection in this universe. And that I believe that Peter passed away. But one thing I do know that Luke said is that Mary Jane and Gwen Stacy in this universe are in a rock band together. And I believe Mary Jane is the lead singer of it. And so she has a guitar. And so, yeah, that's why she has a guitar. She's a lead singer of a rock band with her and Gwen. So that's kind of interesting that if Peter would be yeeted, then Mary Jane and... Then Mary Jane and Gwen Stacy might have ended up becoming... Well, they were friends actually before in many of the comic books. So they would end up just being friends again. Which is kind of cool. Um, yeah, I do sing. We once this random alt. Yep. Uh. Okay, virtual hug shadow banana boy. So, yeah, hopefully you guys are doing well. We're just going to play Fortnite for a while and you guys can definitely add me. Oh. Darn it. You guys can add me. I'm KY fun here. Um, feel free. This last person, it never lets me accept. I don't know why it doesn't look, let me accept TW person. So, yeah. So, yeah, it is, it is, it is, like, I think any job is tedious, though. Honestly, like, before I, before I ended up doing YouTube, Luke and I were working three jobs apiece. I really thought about being a music teacher and I was about to go to school for music um, and everyone in my family told me that the only job, stable job you can get in music is teaching it because it's not really stable to audition to be on American Idol, it's not stable to, to sing by the side of the road with a guitar and beg people to put pennies in your uh, guitar case. There are many jobs in music that are not really stable. Like, it's not real. It's not a real job. It's not a real source of income. Like, it would go up and down. Um, but, like, teaching music to, like, uh, for instance, for, like, high school or, you know, would be stable. But I didn't really want to do that as a job because for one, well, multiple reasons. Uh, if I explain the reasons, you guys will kind of see why I never wanted to be a music teacher as a job. Number one, my my teacher in high school for orchestra, Miss Fom, multiple times, and she was a normal, very kind person. Multiple times, she would have she had a moment where she actually cried in our classroom because they would continue to cut the funding for music teachers in school. Um, the kids would never listen to her because she was teaching in, uh, like, public schools. The kids would, like, throw a spit, you know, in our public school. T kids, basically, to be a music, to get a degree in teaching music, not only do you have to get a degree in education, but you also have to learn every instrument, which costs $30 an hour for lessons for every single instrument. Um, you have to learn all this stuff about musical composition and everything like this. So basically you have to go to like, in addition to going to school, even more like a m m normal bachelor's degree. Like I already went to school for two years. They told me I would have to go five to seven more years just to get a bachelor's degree in music education where I was going to go. And in addition to that, my, my... My lessons, my, my lessons, uh, like you have to take violin, piano, all these different instruments, voice, my, my regular lessons. Hello. 
would be, you know, you could be paying $30 a lesson, 30, four lessons a week, that's $120 every month for one instrument. If you're taking multiple instruments, you cannot pay even one fourth of your rent. Like it's impossible. And that's in addition to your college expenses. They don't really pay for lessons generally. So it's impossible. It, you, it's almost like you have to come from a rich family to end up with a music degree. Oh, well, problem being that my family was not rich and I really love music. So, uh, didn't, yeah, I was kind of screwed from being born and liking music, my family not being rich. So I was kind of like screwed out of that. But my parents sacrificed a lot so I could get a scholarship and everything. So hopefully I can do that again. But the reason why I didn't want to end up doing music teaching is because I just... My teachers were always having meltdowns because they weren't being paid. And they had to take... Of course they would have meltdowns because they had to spend so much money. You have to spend so much money just to get a music degree to teach. By the time you actually teach, you know, kids in public schools that are throwing spit wads at you and not paying attention, it's just like, it's not worth it. It's like you're spending, it's like you're spending your whole life and your whole, you're digging yourself into hundreds of thousands of dollars in debt to teach kids that don't even care if you're there. They're just there to get an easy A. They're not even there to try it. So it's just, it's very, I never wanted to teach music, especially in a public school or something. Like I would never, like it was just the worst. Like, um, and I, and I didn't want to ever teach like private lessons because, uh, my, I had a private music, there was a lady that I took private lessons from. She charged like $15 an hour. And my parents like just wouldn't go out to eat for like months so I could take some lessons. So, yeah, I, I don't know, like, I took some lessons from her for about a year, and, um, you know, I asked her, I was like, well, what do you do for, like, you went to school for music for, like, five years and spent a ton of money on it, and all, you had to buy the instruments, you have to buy the lessons on the side, you're just, basically, you're just oozing in debt. It's like, how much money do you get? It's like, oh, well, I have like four students a day where I get $10. So you're making, and then if, you're le if your students cancel, you could be making two. So you have like two to four students a day, a couple times a week. So you're making like $30 a day. Like you're making less money than you would make if you worked at McDonald's for teaching music. After you, after you, after you, after you've gone to school and 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 borrowed hundreds of thousands of dollars, it doesn't make any sense to me. So that's why I never, I never wanted to do that. I really wanted a job that I could like be creative in. That I still want to get my music degree, but I've told Luke, I've already gone over this with Luke. I've been like, I am gonna get my music degree, but it's not gonna pay anything. Like I'm gonna. I'm going to borrow money and work my tail off on YouTube to pay for it because I really wanted my music degree, but I know it will not pay one cent back to me. Like, there will be no way. Like, I cannot get anything back. And, yeah. I don't know why I'm talking about this, but yeah, basically, oh yeah, where was I talking about? Oh yeah, jobs. So, yeah. But, like, yeah. So, like, YouTube is hard, but... At least YouTube is a kind of job that at least the more you work at it, the more you get paid. Like, you may start out on YouTube making like three cents a month. Like, if your channel has no views or, you know, but the more you work at it, if you don't give up, you can build that up to $100 a month. You work more and you can build that up to $300 a month and then you can work that up and... If you keep ma theoretically, if you keep making videos that consistently gain more and more views over time, you can make a really, you know, you can make more money on YouTube than, you know, some kind of sophisticated job that normal people would think, oh, this is an important job you could make. I mean, you could, so you can do really well for yourself. But the problem is now that, you know, they've taken all the, 
it's impossible. Like you never know what they're gonna do to you. They could take all your ad revenue away, and then you're then you're screwed. You know, theoretic theoretically, you can do really well on YouTube. Um, but in reality, it's kind of different than theoretically because they can take they can take your videos, they can take your channel at any time, they can take half your videos, they can flag all your videos, they can take half your revenue, they can tell you you're only getting 30% of your revenue, they can tell you have copyright strikes on everything. So it's a it's a gamble. It is stressful. It is like there's a lot to it, but. Honestly, I, I would rather, what I'm trying to say is, like, there's a lot of jobs, like, when I used to work retail, three, three, three retail jobs a week, and when I used to, you know, think about being a music teacher and seeing how stressful that job is, honestly, YouTube is not as stressful as other jobs I've had. I do not like working, I do not like working out in public and having someone hovering over my shoulder all the time always watching me you know like I have to be like just I can't like when I do YouTube it's like I can take care of I can decide my own hours I can decide like today Luke is extremely not not able to do the stream and he's like you know what we need to do we never shut off Mary Jane why don't you do that so that is the best thing about YouTube or working for yourself in general any kind of any kind of job where you work for yourself. If you learn to sell homemade soap online, if you had a job where you taught people how to, you know, fix cars online, or if you sold, you know, anything. Any kind of job in which you work for yourself, in the end of everything, is, is I don't know, there's just a freedom in it you cannot describe that, yes, you get to the point where like, sometimes I'm a harder boss on myself than I would be if I actually had a boss for retail. Like, like Luke and I, if we're, our head is pounding, sometimes, sometimes we'll still stream. We'll still, like, we'll still push ourselves. Like, sometimes I try to push myself harder than if I would be working for somebody else. Because I know, like, if I let, if I let myself do whatever I want, then I'll always give myself a break. And then I'll never work hard. So sometimes I like push myself harder than I would if I was not working for myself. But, um, I don't even know what I'm trying to say. But yeah, it. But at the same time, when I'm really, like, I really cannot do it and I really can't, then I don't need to ask anyone. I can't, I don't need to, like, I don't need to ask anybody. I don't need to feel stressed out and be like, wow. I really need this per this day off for this person's wedding, or I really need, I'm really not feeling well, I really can't do this. And I don't have a boss that's like, you better come in or you're fired. Like, I don't have anyone telling me that. That's the best, that's the best thing about working for yourself. So yeah, I mean, it is stressful every day, but at the same time, I, I can't do, like, after working for myself, I cannot. Of course I did, like, uh, several years, a couple of years ago, I went back and I did, like, I worked at the grocery store for a while, but I was actually losing the same, I was losing more when I was, when I was working at the grocery store, I was losing more money from YouTube, like, the amount of money I was using, losing from not being on videos was more, I was losing more money than I was making from the grocery store. So, in reality... It wasn't, it didn't help. Like, I, it didn't help at all for me to work at the grocery store. So, it's like any, any bit, like, if I was able to, like, if I spend the morning, you know, like, um, like, promoting a video or, you know, getting game, game footage ready for the next day or, you know, staying up and, and even talking with Luke about his next Batman, uh, video he's doing or you know making thumbnails um checking on the newsletter and stuff it feels like oh this is a waste of time because i'm not actually being paid any money for this but in the end you will be paid back for your own hard work you just have to honestly it's like the best thing about working for yourself is you just have to like 
when you believe that when you believe that it will work, it will. When you when you stop believing yourself, it won't work anymore. I don't know how to explain it. But yeah, it was nice to go out today. Um I enjoy I I, I was happy. I we were gonna have ice cream, but there was a tiny spider in our car and uh Yeah, Luke was freaking out, so I ended up um I ended up killing it, um, so that Luke would not freak out anymore. Uh, cause he, he, he has a fear of spiders and he has like trauma from spiders and stuff. Um, which is understandable. He was like traumatized by, like some people threw a spider at him and like messed with him a lot when, when he was in a really bad situation a long time ago. So it makes sense. I can understand why he, d he... He has basically, he does have arachnophobia. He has, I, I know people joke around about it like he doesn't like spiders, but he actually has an actual, like, condition where he literally cannot be around a spider. Um, so yeah, uh, so yeah, there was this tiny, tiny little spider. It was so small. And, um, I think it had been in my car for four months. I was just like, I tried to get it a few times, but it didn't. It just like escaped me every time and then Luke was just like I said let's go out for ice cream and Luke's like I am not going in the car for four I'm not going in the car like for for you know 20 more minutes with that um that spider in the car so ah oh my god got yeeted so yeah um Oh, there we go. I was making this huge long thing. Um, yeah, so basically, um, Luke was really worried about it, so I kept trying to smash it. After I smashed it, I thought that- he thought that I didn't get it, but I did. Um, so yeah, he was really worried about it, so I basically told him, like, I was like, I was like, actually, I said, I think that, that Spire's been in the car for four months, Luke. I was like, I said, you know, he's probably mad at you. <laughs> he's probably cowering in the corner because, you know, you, 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 you got your Viking wife to, like, destroy him. He's probably like, what's your deal, you know, man? You literally, you know, you killed me for no reason. Um... Or, like, I thought that I had broken off one of its legs or something. It was, I said, the spider, like, he was worrying about the spider, so I was like, the spider's probably crying. <laughs> um, but then we, we got home and there was, like, a really dark blotch on my, uh, on my, on the notebook that I used to, uh, try to get the spider. So I re we realized, yeah, it, Luke would not be satisfied until he knew it was literally killed. So, I mean, generally, I don't like to actually kill... I, I, if I can put it on a notebook and put it outside, I will try to do that if I can. But, like, if I'm just trying to kill it so Luke doesn't feel like if he, so he feels better, I just try to kill it. If I can't kill... If I can't... Like, if I can't get it onto a notebook and get it outside, I will... I don't have any problem killing it. Like, it's just a bug. But, yeah. Alright, good job, everyone! Anyways, so yeah, we got rid of the spider. We didn't get ice cream, so hopefully Luke will get ice cream with me tomorrow. Oh, Axionimbus uh, says when K-Wing predicted that uh, that there was something about Gotham, said I am the bad god in the comments. I I hear like he's no longer the Batman guy. He's the bad god. Oh wow. I want an Electro skin. He's my favorite villain. Thank you so much, Ender Dude. Thank you. Alright, I'm just gonna go return to the lobby so we can get more people in, I guess. Thank you, Ender Dude. Well, like, it doesn't bother me. Like, like I don't... Well, the, the spider was so small... Like, um, hey, Mystery ENT. Hey, um, hey, um, hey, Mystery ENT says, I'm in your party. Awesome. 
Yep, I will add you. Sounds hard to be a music master. Yeah, it is, Silver Leo. I mean, I don't know. For a long time, I thought to myself that I just was bad at it. Like, maybe I just sucked at... Because I was, I actually won all these scholarships for music and stuff. I thought, maybe I won these scholarships, but I'm still not very good at music. Maybe I'm not good enough to be in, like, have to major in music. Maybe I won scholarships in my hometown, but I'm not good enough to actually major in music in real life. Like, maybe I have to be even better than I, you know what I mean? Like, if, say, say you, say you won races in district for like running or you won basketball games but then you tried out for the NBA and they were like no like you're not good enough that's kind of how I feel with music it's like every time I audition for like the colleges I want to go to and stuff I feel like I'm auditioning for the NBA for music it feels like okay I was really good where I was from but it feels like I'm nowhere close to I always feel intimidated like, I always, I always underestimate my own abilities. Like, even when I was younger, when I would do music for school and stuff, I always thought that I was, like, I was at the bottom rung of everything. And then later on, like, years later, people would tell me, oh my gosh, like, you were the best in that choir. And, like, oh my gosh, you were so amazing. So I was like, oh, I did not know. Like, I don't, like, I don't actually, like, I cannot tell if I'm good at... Like, I don't know what it is, but I cannot tell if I'm good at something or not. Like, I cannot, I do, I cannot tell. Like, I just think that I'm bad at it all the time. I think I'm bad at most things. Like, I seriously don't, like, and it's weird. If I have confidence that I can be way better, like, if, then I usually am. But, especially, like, with gaming, like, if I start thinking I'm terrible at every game... I will start bumping into walls and not getting everything because I'm just, I'm kind of like Barry Allen. Luke said there's two different, there's two different flashes. There's Barry Allen and there's Wally West. Luke likes Wally West better as the Flash because Wally doesn't need anyone's approval. Wally doesn't need anyone to believe in him. Wally just does his own thing. Wally just has confidence on his own. Barry needs somebody to believe in him. Barry needs people to tell him, no, you, you can do this. I am a Barry. Like, I if people do not tell me I can do this, I don't know what I'm doing. Like, I just, it's like if somebody tells me you're a terrible singer right before the audition, then I will just be terrible. Like, it will be horrible. If somebody, like, if my mom is there and she's like, oh my gosh, you're amazing. Like, then I will do amazing and I'll be, like, the best audition there. This is like, I don't know what it is, but I, I definitely lose my confidence really easily. That's probably like the word, whenever I'm, uh, whenever I'm applying for jobs and stuff, people are always like, what's your character flaws? It's like, uh, so many, so many. It's just like, it's like, I don't want to say it, but it's like, okay, let's see. Shyness. Uh, I completely lose confidence in everything. Um, I don't know. It's just, like, the worst. Like, where, what are the worst character flaws I can have? Uh, I have those. I don't know. So, yeah. But, I mean, I'm, I'm doing better. Like, now I, I listen to a lot of positive thinking tapes. It helps me a lot. Like, it is surprising. If I tell my... Like, if I listen to a positive thinking tape that's just, like, you, you know what you're doing. You're confident. You know, you know the right words to say. Like, these kind of, like, positive messages, like, that you can, like, listen to at night. And then in the morning, like, the more I listen to that, it really helps. It's kind of like, like, I didn't have, like, there was a time where I wasn't, I didn't, wasn't talking to my mom for a long time. And she was, like, my biggest confidence booster. And without her there, it was like, I couldn't do anything. I was just falling all over myself. It was like... So it's like that kind of like replaces like if you don't if you have like if you have parents that are really mean always tell you you're worthless or if you have friends that are really rude or if you don't have anyone in your life and you're all alone like I mean I'm not trying to like I don't know I, I know it's a little weird but I really do think like those positive thinking tapes or even like telling yourself every day like writing it down like I can do this I'm a really good singer or I'm a really good basketball player or I'm really good at gaming like if you tell yourself it like you write it down and you tell yourself every day it seems dumb 
But for some reason, it, it tricks your brain into thinking, I am a really good artist. I am a really good basketball player. I don't know why, but it makes you believe in yourself, and then you can actually end up doing it. I know it seems dumb, but it does work for me. Like, some people it doesn't work for, but it definitely does work for me. Anyway, I'm pretty weird, but... I don't know what I was talking about, but yeah, um... But yeah, so we, I ended up killing the spider, and I, I really wanted ice cream, but it, it is really nice. I, I do, I'm in such a better mood when I get to go out, and Luke's always like, wow, you're in such a happy mood, and, um, I just, I don't know, Luke doesn't really, I mean, yeah, Luke has a lot of medical problems, so he doesn't really go outside a lot, so... It, it feels good to be like, hey, like, I don't know what, what it is, but I'm kind of like, like, for instance, like, when I, when, when Luke and I used to live in near Boston, Massachusetts, I don't know what it was, but, well, Luke is super confident usually, like, he's from New York, so he's really confident all the time, and whenever he's out with me, like, I don't know, people are just always like, hey, how's it going? Like, he's just like, hey, like doors just like magically open all the time. Hey Batman. <laughs> like I don't know what it is, but people just really like he's very charming in real life. Like he's very like like I used to go when I would be hanging out with Luke and, like like it could be around anyone, but like like charming to to but to everyone. Like he's just really very very good with people like he's really good with you know just talking to people making them feel comfortable you know handshaking them like everyone feels it's just like hey it reminds me of like that um i don't know like reminds me of that movie uh i don't want to say it reminds me of tommy boy but kind of does Luke is kind of like Tommy Boy's dad. He's like really confident and always like making people feel people feel comfortable. He's always knows how to like talk to everyone. He's like completely down to earth. He knows how to talk to every single person. He makes like everyone feel comfortable. Um, even when we're going, even when we go to like really ritzy places, like like if if a game company puts us up in a really classy hotel. And there's like really, really, like people that are used to really working with extremely rich clients. Like Luke will just be like talking to them, like, like he's like their best friend, like their next door neighbor, making them laugh and stuff. It's really interesting. Like I cannot, I can, I mean I could do that if I worked really hard. No, I can't. I really can't. Even if I work really hard, I can't really do that. So it's kind of nice going out with Luke because it's like, when I go out on my own, I just am like a deer in the headlights everywhere I'm going. It's weird because I'm the girl, so I should probably know how to be more sociable, but I'm really not. So, um, like I'm good with old ladies, children, like church ladies, like, I don't know, <laughs> at a bingo club, uh, you know, those kind of events, I'd probably be good with, um, what am I doing here? Why am I making this? What am I doing here? Ah. But yeah, no, it's just kind of like, uh, it's, it's just kind of nice to, I, I don't think, I think I'm just, like, glad that Luke is finally out of the house. It's nice to go out with him and just, like... Luke was just like, why are you so happy? It's like, oh, I don't know. It's just kind of nice to... I don't know. It's just kind of nice. I guess it's just kind of nice to see Luke talk more than, like, three three words uh, in, like, eight hours. So. Mm. But, yeah, like, the whole time, the whole time, like, my parents were always, like, don't, like, don't worry about, you know, talking to people in school. Don't worry about making friendships. Just worry about your homework. Get the homework done. So I was always, like, trying to get out of there. If people tried to talk to me at school or work, I would always be, like, trying to leave and get home. I'd be like, I don't have time. Like, I have to get home and get my work done. So, um, yeah. <laughs> it's just... Yeah. Oh. Like 
but yeah, I think that's how Luke really is. Like, I, I see him, like, he's a lot like that movie with Tommy Boy, his dad. He is a lot, he is a lot like that. Just like a very down-to-earth person. I don't even know. Um, yeah, so it was nice. Yeah, it's nice going out, but it's just like, I don't know. It's weird that I go, I go out, I go out with Luke for, uh, to do like two errands and then he's like exhausted. He's just like, oh, you know, but in reality, I don't know. Oh, oh, I know. Luke was worried. He was kind of, it was hard for him to get back to sleep. He, he was up all night until 10 a.m. Working like all night. So like from, so Luke was up all night from 5 p.m. last night until, until, so basically Luke hasn't really gotten to sleep until 5 p.m. last night. Because he was up till, till 5 p.m. last night working all night, all day on streams yesterday um, until, you know, midnight. Then he went to sleep for like three hours. So yeah, in like 48 hours he slept like six hours. So yeah, that's not very much. He tried to sleep three hours, but yeah, he doesn't, like I said, Luke has a lot of medical conditions. It's really hard for him to be out, especially during the pandemic. So it's, it's very, like we went and talked to people and it was nice, but he was probably just putting on a front because he really doesn't like being out during the pandemic. It's like, he was like, ah, there were so many people that I touched and stuff. Hello. Hey, guys. Um. I'm going to try to connect it over here. Oops. I don't really know what I'm doing. I'm just going to try to do it. So I'm, I'm attempting to do what Luke does, which is like talk about his day while he's doing this because um, I usually don't talk at all. I usually just play the game because <laughs> my day is usually not very interesting. It's like get up, um, grab something to eat, try to figure out what I need to do for the day. Like, do I need to, um, you know, uh, do I need to grind in a character? Do I need to look at a new game or try to figure something out? Okay, great. Ah, getting shot down again. I never know what is going on. Like, I never know why my, I never know why it breaks. It just like frustrates me so much. Like, why is it always breaking? Oh. I don't know what's going on. I guess I ran out of bricks. I don't know why I ran, ran out of bricks so fast, though. I get so many of them. Anyway, good to see everyone in the chat. I hope everyone stays going great and just showing off Mary Jane and just talking about nothing in particular. But I just, I thought it was really, I don't know what, I don't know what got me into it, but I was looking up, uh, oh, I was looking up something about, cause I'm like Scottish and Norwegian. So I was looking up, you know, some stuff about, I don't know what, cause like people always say our personalities are really off, Luke and I, but I, I got onto this website on accident. But I looked up like what Norwegian people are like and what what Scottish people are like. I'm like hardly Scottish at all. Everything about my personality, like the way like like Scottish people are generally very tall and very thin. I'm very stocky. I'm very short. I'm definitely look Norwegian. Like I like they say Norwegian people just do not in general 
like to talk to other people. We like to be outside. We look for our main thing in, like, if a Norwegian girl likes you, the main thing she looks for in a guy is kindness. A guy who's very kind. It's like, yeah, that makes sense. That's why I ended up with Luke, because he's very kind. But, um, yeah, I don't know why I was looking that up today. But I was, <laughs> then Luke was like, do me, do me. So I was looking up, uh, Irish people. Apparently, <laughs> apparently, like, um, Irish, Irish guys are known for always joking around, always, and being very, like, some kind of thing about just being very nice people to be with. Everyone wants to be with, around Irish people. They always are just pleasant to be with. And it, like, makes sense, so much sense. Like, Luke is always making people feel comfortable. He, people just like being around him for some reason. I do not have that, like, I cannot do that to people. I'm always wanting to get out of there, like... I always want to just be alone. <laughs> so. Well, that's alright. So now I know why, like, on every... Every, like, Zodiac, every website, it says, like, Luke and I are definitely not compatible, apparently. But, oh... I mean, we really, we really like being around each other, so, well, whatever, I guess it doesn't really matter. Oh, 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 let's do this. Alright, I'm just trying to make this huge fort so that I do not end up... Oh my gosh. Ah! Oh no, no, no. Okay, guys. Let's get this. Okay, alright, what's happening? Ah, uh, okay. Oh my gosh. I don't know. Okay, here we go. Oh, we survived pretty long. Now I know, need to know my heritage as Sons of Gaming. If nothing, if not interesting. Oh, thanks, Chad. You shouldn't let people's words dictate how your performance should be. Block out the words and focus on the end goal. Thanks, Blackwing. I appreciate that. Thank you. Oh, great to see you, Blackwing, and, uh, uh, Chad, and, uh, Julie and everyone, Julia, I hope you guys are having a good day today. Well, that's all. Well, you're awesome, Blackwing. Thank you so much. Hope you're having a good day, my friend. And great to see you. And um, everyone, hope you guys are doing well. Oh my gosh, now we're really, my gosh, this is really like, 
Oh, this is getting really intense. Oh, this is getting so intense. Oh my gosh. I got yeeted by the storm again. Yeah, but like apparently like there was real some really interesting thing that um I I, I mean it doesn't mean it's all it's always like um it doesn't mean those websites are accurate completely. But they mentioned that like a thing that a lot of people say about like dating or marrying an Irish guy is like basically like they said like an Irish guy when you were dating him is like extremely like he would be extremely charming like irresistibly charming like always making jokes just charming up the wazoo like charming you completely to the point where you're just you don't even know what your name is anymore you're just like wow this guy is really putting on the charm and then after you get married or he knows you're his girl or whatever then apparently like there's this thing on the internet that says like once he has you then it's like okay the next day it's like okay did you feed the pigs yet <laughs> so basically the joke is like that it's like once it's like okay i charmed you i brought you home <laughs> all right now it's just business as usual i don't need to like put on the charm anymore so um i thought that was interesting because Luke's dad is Irish, and it, that's exactly what his mom told me about his dad. Was like, oh, but she didn't know it was an Irish thing. She actually said, she was like, oh, this is um, she's like, this is how people with ADD are. It's like, oh no, this is not. She's very incorrect about that. This is not an ADD trait. I don't, or it could be, but that's not what it's from. I think it, it it might be an Irish thing, according to the internet and like thousands of people saying it, I don't know. But that's interesting that like where like people say people from different areas have different personality traits, that's really interesting I guess to think about. But like yeah, I mean it's kind of interesting. I guess we're all you know made a little different which is what I guess makes people more exciting and interesting actually. So, yeah, I thought that's interesting because that's exactly how I feel. It's like, oh my gosh, like, it's, like I thought, wow, Luke thinks I'm like some kind of magical princess. And then after we get married, it's like, oh, my, we just need to, you know, we got this list of things to do. It's like, oh my gosh. Um, so, yeah. So, I think that's why, like, I'm always, like, really happy whenever Luke goes out with me because it's like, it's like Luke will go out with me on like I guess special occasions or my birthday or something but usually it's just like it's not he's not the kind of guy to do like a date night like every week or anything like that it's kind of like uh oh. like he he always like whenever we, when we were first married I was always like upset I was like well, we are not going on any dates anymore I was like what's happening I don't understand do you not like me am I not pretty anymore I don't understand what's going on He's always like, well, he's like, like, we'll be like going in the car to take the trash out. And he's like, this is kind of like a date right now. It's like, we're, you know, it's like we're dating every moment I'm with you is a date. And I'm, I'm always, always like, really? Because it doesn't, um, okay. <laughs> but that's cute, I guess. It's like, we just likes hanging out with me which is very sweet he always like after we record after we stream a lot like when I go to bed he's always like I love you and I really enjoyed hanging out with you even if we were just sitting there like stressing about like numbers or trying to make art for the channel or trying to figure out what to do like even if it was stressful he's like you know what it was stressful but I like spending time with you so that is he is very sweet and very charming very nice Oh, so yeah. Hopefully Luke will get some sleep. Oh, so hopefully, uh, yeah. I'm not really, uh, so yeah. If anyone else wants to play, um, this is Mary Jane from Fortnite. And, uh, it, like I said, this is Alternate Earth Mary Jane. She is in a band with, uh, Gwen Stacy and, um... I guess Peter Parker is gone in that universe and Gwen and Mary Jane are just hanging out in a band like best friends and uh yeah
This is what she looks like in that comic. So this is from an actual comic. Um, yeah. Look very Jane and Gwen Stacy. Oh, thank you, Mr. ENT, for helping me watch my bag. Uh, I mean, I just look, I just look up online, like, I Google it, like, like, I actually got into this on accident because I was trying to figure out what was going on with, because I was trying to find this, like, I, I'll, I'll tell you guys why I ended up with this. It's really weird. Basically, I've, I've been making a lot of rice recently, and I was, like, putting my hands in the, in the rice because I was washing the jasmine rice. And, um, it was a really long story, but it doesn't even matter. But basically, I was, like, washing the jasmine rice, and, like, I noticed, like, I have really, it's really, really hard to grow my nails. Like, it's so hard. I usually have really short nails. This is just a dumb story, but I'm just gonna tell it anyway, because I'm just sitting here playing Fortnite. So anyway, so a few days ago, I was just, you know, like, when you have, like, uh, regular, uh, like, rice from, like, that... Well, for me, when I make rice that's either from Mexico or the United States or whatever, just regular long grain rice, I don't really wash it a lot. I rinse it a little bit. That's all I do. I don't really wash it a ton. But, like, with jasmine rice, I, from what I saw on the internet and stuff, I have to actually put it in the bowl, like, put my hands in it, run them through a few times until the water doesn't look milky anymore. It has to look like actual, like, clear water. Then you know you wash the rice enough so it's not starchy. And then you can actually use the rice and cook it. And uh, that's what everyone says. So that's how I do it. Um, so yeah, I was sitting there like washing the jasmine rice with my hands. Like obviously clean my hands first and then wash it. And then I noticed like the day after that my nails like grew almost like a half an inch. Well, I was like, well they, they grew a third of an inch I would say, my nails the next day and it was like a day and my nails grew like crazy after just putting my hands in the rice and I always have problems like my hair used to be way longer when I was younger I always have problems like growing it and like you know I don't really have a ton of money for you know hair masks and stuff they cost so much money I don't have money for $50 shampoo I don't have time like even if I had the money for $50 shampoo I wouldn't want to use it like even like I'm the kind of person where it's like I just feel like that's way too much money to spend on. like I always had them even when I was growing up when I was younger I my parents always would tell me like I don't know this is why like when I was younger like when I was in high school and stuff uh, basically, basically my, my parents would tell me a lot about stories about people in other countries that they, you know, my family were missionary families. A lot of them were missionaries in other countries and they would talk about, you know, my dad would always tell me whenever I would complain, my mattress is too hard. I don't like my pillows. I don't like the blankets on my bed. I need new this. Then you do that. My dad would always tell me every single time. He's like, number one, he would always say, do all things without complaining. And then he would say, 70% of the world sleeps on the floor. Which, I don't know if that's still true, but I think it is. Um, like, 70% of people in the world sleep on the floor on, like, a mat. They don't really sleep on beds. So, my dad would always tell me that to, like, keep it in perspective. So, like, things like that, I always heard growing up. Like, I couldn't really complain about anything growing up. My parents would be on me like crazy because they'd be like, well, you know, at least you have this. Like, you can't really complain about this. So, um, yeah, I didn't really get away with complaining about anything because my, you know, my, my parent, my, my mom's, uh, family were missionaries in China and my dad's family were missionaries in Venezuela, so... It was like, they didn't, like, my dad, like, whenever my mom would be like, oh, we need a better lawn, my dad, my dad used to say to my mom, well, he's like, in a lot of places, I, I, I grew up in, in South America, people didn't even have a lawn, he's like, they didn't have money to waste on the lawn, he's like, they had dirt, and then they had their house, 
He was like, they didn't even have a lawn. He's like, he's like, he's like, people who have excess water, they're the ones who. He's like, if you had extra water, you would spend that on, you know, you'd, you'd use that, for, you know, you're for your family or to water your animals. You wouldn't put that on your lawn. He's like, what a waste. <laughs> My dad is a really interesting character, so it's like, I don't know. It's just really interesting. So, growing up, I always thought it was really hard for me to not. Everything seemed like a waste. Like, so like when all these girls were like, "Oh my gosh, I'm getting this nail polish and this makeup," and I would see how much it was. Like, "Oh my gosh, this makeup is ten dollars for this bottle." I couldn't even buy. It. Like, I couldn't even bring myself to buy it. I'd be like, "Wow, I could just give this money to." some like how could I like if I would buy food for myself it'd be one thing but it was really hard for me to do girly things or anything growing up because I just felt so guilty about it like my mom she was really girly growing up but she didn't grow up with my dad it was like kind of always guilty for her like she ended up marrying my dad but she didn't like have him as a dad so like since day one he was always telling me like you know, like, in this country, they don't even have this, and, like, so, it was really interesting, so, like, I just, so, anyway, like I said, back to my story, so, I don't, I don't really like spending a lot of money on things in general, so, I was surprised that that, uh, that, that, uh, you know, that, that rice made my, like, nails grow, and I thought, wow, maybe this would make my hair grow really fast and be, because, like, I was trying to tell Luke my whole life, my hair would always feel different than everybody else's. Like, it was super thick and coarse. And I, I was looking it up online. Like, is Norwegian hair really coarse and thick? And, like, in the internet said yes. Like, it is. So I was like, thank you. It's like, I finally realized it doesn't feel like, you know, normal. It may look normal, but it really doesn't feel like it. You know, it can, it would like hurt my head sometimes and it would grow really slowly. I would tell people like all the time, like it didn't feel no like everyone else's. Like I just felt like it wasn't, it could not be tamed. Um, it was just really weird. Um, so yeah, but then I was on that website and I was looking up stuff. I ended up, I ended up, I was on Quora.com if you guys are wondering. And then I was looking up and then they were talking about other things about Norwegians and I was like, Oh, wow, this is really interesting information. Apparently, I only like to be in nature all the time. I don't really like to be around other humans, uh, really at all. Mm, and I have a very strong sense of right and wrong. Extreme. Extreme. Like a code, like an inner code, like a knight or a samurai or something. like a. And they even wrote on the website that most people believe that, like, this code comes from the Viking days for some reason because basically it's like if someone breaks their word or breaks my trust, it's like I don't, like basically I will really be kind to, apparently according to my personality profile for Norwegians, which may or may not be accurate, uh, it's like I will, I will give the world to people. I will give people the world. I will do everything I can to try to be kind to people. Like, Apparently, for Norwegians, kindness is the most important thing, and, and family, like, just being kind to people, and if people are not kind, and they don't act right, I will, I am not very forgiving about it, apparently, according to the internet, which, I was like, yeah, this is spot on for me, I, I am like this, it is like, you've broken the code, you've broken the code, <laughs> So, it's like, I just have very high expectations, and when people break them, it's just like, I, I'm, I don't necessarily think I'm upset, it's just like, they're just broken to me. Like, I cannot trust this person ever again. Like, I cannot, because it's like, they didn't act like a human being around me, they didn't act like, uh, yeah, it just doesn't, it's just like, it's, they didn't act, they didn't treat people right. Like, I expect people to be kind. If people aren't kind, I am very upset. So, yeah, I was like, yeah, this is, this is spot on for me. Which I found was kind of ironic that, I don't know, I find it ironic that, you know, I don't know, it just seems weird that people from a, like, a Viking era expect people to be kind. But I guess kindness is really important. 
the Norwegian, so yeah, I thought that was interesting. So yeah, that's how I got on the, the website where it was talking about different places, different kinds of supposedly personality traits, but it might not be accurate, but it was pretty accurate for me. I do really like being in nature. The only time I ever, ever slept, like the best night I ever slept was in my, on my grandpa's, uh, house. Um, he had hammocks outside his house and I slept outside and I was so peaceful. Like there's a few times that I've slept outside and I, it's like the best night's sleep I've ever had. Just like on the ground bugs crawling all over me like literally mosquitoes biting me all over the place and i am just so peaceful like, i don't care like i just feel happier hearing i i hate like i always tell luke i always feel like like these four walls are just like bothering me it's like blocking me and cramping my style like i cannot i don't like i don't like being walled in it's just really weird it makes me feel uncomfortable <laughs> Oh, well, anyway. Yeah, so that's how I got on that website. If you guys want to know, <laughs> I was looking up, is a Norwegian hair coarse and harsh? I was like, yes, it is. <laughs> Apparently, according to the internet. Oh. So, anyway, hopefully, you guys are having a good day today. Again, I'm just showing off Mary Jane. I don't really, I don't really have a conversation about Mary Jane. I don't know if Luke will do a video where he talks about Mary Jane. I think this is the video. Like, he doesn't have a lot of time. Luke does have Mary Jane on his account. So, I mean, he can obviously play as her. But he gifted her to me. So, that was kind of nice. I think she was like $10 for him to give to me. I don't know. If she was way more, like... Nobody tell me because I really don't like to spend a lot of money, so I will, like, I'm believing that she costs $10. If it's not $10, I'm going to be, I my night is going to be ruined, so just please tell me she was only $10, please. I don't, if I think that she was more, it's, I am, I'm going to be really bothered. <laughs> so yeah, I don't know. Yeah, so anyway, that that's how my long about thing. It was like, um, so... Yeah, it was kind of weird. Oh, wow, it's already past midnight. I didn't even realize that. Oh, hello, people of the chat. How's everyone doing? Hello, guys. Oh, good, good job. Building the bridge. Oh, you're an EFJ, eh? Oh, I am too. I'm the same as you, Anna. Yeah, INFJ. Yeah, I'm the same. I am the same as you, Anna, actually. I'm the exact same. That's what I am. I thought that was really interesting because Luke is always telling me he's not very... I'm always getting mad at Luke telling him he's, you know, like, oh, like he's always like, we have to do this video today, and I'm just like, I don't feel good, and he's like, well, we have to do it, so please, you know, try to get some coffee, and please, you know, take a minute, and let's do it. And I'm all... <laughs> Sometimes, like, when I'm really upset because Luke is my husband and my boss, I get a little bit annoyed and I'll be like mean like I'll say it under my breath like I'm so mad, like I'm mad so like I'm always saying I'm always like upset I'm always constantly like since we're working together and Luke's kind of has to be the boss it makes me always a little bit upset at him all the time <laughs> so like I don't know like people always say never work with your spouse ever so I mean in reality we for our marriage to be better we probably shouldn't work together but for our channel to be good we should work together because it makes we there's no one i would rather do commentary with than hang out with than than uh luke so it's like yeah we grade on each other a lot more because we work together but i don't know i would i would miss it like i think it's worth it i think it's okay like if you know 
I don't know. Oh yeah, right. So then I was like looking up personality types and I was like, oh yeah, so Norwegian women, the most thing that they look for in a guy is kindness. It's number one. They don't care about like more than looks, more than money. They don't even care much about money, looks, charming, anything. Not personality, you know, whether or not the person is funny. It doesn't even matter to us. A most important thing is kindness. That's the most important thing. The number one thing. How are you kind? That's the only thing that matters. That's what the internet says. And I was like, according to the internet, I said, you must be really kind, Luke, because, like... You know, apparently I'm not the kind of person that would trust very many people. Like, you must be really kind. Because that, that's supposedly most important to me, so. Yep. And he is. He is very kind. Oh, wow, Jonathan. Yeah, EFJA. Uh, yep. Treat others the way you should be treated. Yeah, definitely. Um, they're you the way you'd want to be treated. Exactly, um, Chad. Definitely. Oh, you have Norwegian on both of my parents. Oh, you have Norwegian on both of your parents' sides. Oh, wow, Anna. Yeah. Yeah. It's actually not... I mean, like, I feel like... I mean, I don't know. I'm just saying this because I'm Norwegian, but... It's like, I'm... I don't think I would say this about myself if I wasn't, but I just feel like I never fit in with anyone. I don't, I just feel like I'm not, I don't want to say I'm not human, but it just doesn't feel like I fit in with society. Like, I just do not fit in here at all. Like, in this, like, everyone else is in a party, I would rather be in the corner reading a book or more likely I would be outside in a tree or something. Like, I just don't, it's just like I'm not... I'm not fitting in at all. Like, I'm just, I'm not even, like, there's no, like, I was just looking at my personality type online, like, for what it says about, like, you know, how Norwegian women would be, and it's like, so basically, I just don't fit in at all. Like, it, the only country that I would fit in in would be Norway. Like, I looked it up, and apparently if I went to Norway, everyone there likes to go outside all the time, and they just love talking about nature, and... They're very kind. They, you know, they, they, they expect everyone to be extremely kind. And if they're not, they kind of like, you know, they don't really, they don't really stand for people being, you know, not kind. And if you really love hiking and you love just being outside, then they just, they just want to talk about that with you all day. You know, so it's just like, I was like, wow, well, I should just move there because then I would fit in, obviously. But, um, but yeah, I thought that, uh, yeah, so I mean, I don't think it's a bad thing. Like, I love being, I don't think, like, someone who loves being outside and really appreciates being kind, I don't think that's, like, a, I don't think that's bad at all. Honestly, I, like I told Luke, I said, I really, really like myself. I like me. I wouldn't change, I would never want to change me. I like how I am. I, I don't. You know, it's like everyone else that I don't like. No, <laughs> no, it's just like I just don't fit in with everyone else. I do like myself, but I just I don't fit in with any, every, anyone else. That's the problem. But it's not really a problem. It's not really a problem. I really like myself. So yeah, that's very cool, Anna. I feel the same. Says Mystery Ent. Aww, I would say Luke is more in the middle. He admires his hard work at the same time as someone ever steps and isn't afraid to stand up, tell it like it is. Aww, yep, definitely mystery ENT. Yep, so anyway, sorry to get so weird today. I like rice, but it spikes my, uh, blood sugar. Oh, yeah. Eating meat a lot makes your nails grow fast. Oh, that's cool, um, Silver Leo. They have the real MJ now, not the MCU fake one. Oh, okay, yeah, definitely Sons of Gaming. I'm Batman K Wives is Mystery ENT. It's not not nothing if it's interesting. Well then again, I've known you both for years. Definitely, uh, Vic.
Well, one thing I, I, I thought was interesting is Luke was like, well, look up what Portuguese people are like. So now I'm just talking about this the entire stream, but so because Luke is part Irish, part Portuguese. So I was like, okay, so I'm looking at what Portuguese people are like. And I was really surprised actually. Portuguese people are generally very shy, um, but very joking around. Like they love joking around. And so, and it said like uh, the same for Irish people. So that explains why Luke loves joking around. But I also found it weird, like on the Irish thing website that I was on was saying that Irish people like to, like if they are really, really close to you, they like to take like little jabs, not really, I don't know, the description of it was jabs at you that will cut to your bone and then they will see if you will come up with a quick retort and then if you do, then you will be like fast friends forever or something. I didn't really understand what the website was saying, but basically it was saying like, they like to make jokes that generally, if you made that joke to a person, like they would only joke with people like that if they're really, really close. It generally, if you would joke like that to a normal person, they would be offended, but they would joke like that to a really good friend to kind of test the waters or to see, you know, if you can take a joke or something or to mess with you like uh you know like the way luke does with me about how i'm blonde and everything like this so i was like oh that makes so much sense because luke always jokes with me all the time that's his way of showing affection apparently according to the internet it's like irish people's way of showing affection is to joke with you about things that are like really savage like in a way I guess like Irish people can be very savage but then they're just doing it as a joke like it's funny but then they'll see if you retort they're basically trying to bot like me like tease you basically like to bother you so that's one thing I was always annoyed about like growing up with like not growing up but like when I first got married with Luke because I always try my whole life I always tried to be like not I always try to be kind to people and always try to treat people right. That was like my number one thing. So whenever Luke would mess with me all the time, I would get so angry with him. And then like apologize later, like, oh, I'm so sorry. But then he would just do it the, the next day, all the time. I would get so frustrated all the time. And being like, why do you keep saying this to me about me on the air? And like, I'm so angry at you. Like, I'm, then I would be really mean and savage back and he would laugh. And he would just have this twinkle in his eye like, oh, I got you fired up. And I was just like, what? Like, I don't want to be fired up. Like, you're making me so upset right now. Like, you have no idea. Like, sometimes after streams, like when he was like laughing and messing with me so much, like after streams, I'd be like, I am so upset at you. You have no idea. Like, he's like, oh, really? He's like, I didn't mean to make you upset. And he'd just be like, sorry, and give me a huge hug. And I was just like, what? Like. So it's just like, okay, this makes so much sense reading this website saying like, I don't know if that's like an Irish thing, but I don't know. So I guess like Irish people like to bother people to see if they can take a joke or something. So I was just like, wow, this is really interesting. Like this is teaching me so much. I should have, I was like, <laughs> I told Luke, I don't know. This seems so rude. But I was like, they should have put a warning label on you being Irish. I was like, put a warning label, like, danger, ladies. Like, he's charming, but after this, you know, you need to watch out. Like, I don't know. Conclusion, leprechauns are savage. Oh, yeah, Joseph West says, that's why me and Luke get along. We're both sarcastic. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, Chad says, well, it means you have the f fast friends with Luke if you have the same sense of humor. Yeah, definitely, Chad. Oh, some of your friends are part Irish as well, not me, you though. Oh, okay, Julia. Well, there you go, Julia. I gave you some, some warnings there, some tips, just in case. Um, hey, United Thrive, how's it going? Hey, everyone. Um, hope everyone's day is going great today. So yeah, like I'm always like trying to like keep my composure here, and Luke is always, he's always like. He's always like trying, he's like purposely trying to rile me up for fun, so.
uh, a conclusion. Uh, uh, leprechauns would be savage. People at school today. I'm bad at Fortnite. Uh, say I'm bad at Fortnite, but I'm actually good. Well, then you are good, um, Hayden. Definitely. Nickelodeon has greenlit Spongebob for a 14th season. And Patrick Star's show is getting second season. Awesome, Devin Rose. Um, so, yeah, that was interesting. Apparently, humor is the vehicle for bonding with me, says so Cyber Rogue. There you go, Cyber Rogue. Can we do a fashion show in Fortnite, says uh, Hayden. The leprechauns have entered the chat, says Daniel. Yep. Definitely. But I did, I did find something weird about, uh, well, I don't know if I should say it, but, like, I'm always telling Luke, like, yeah, you know, you are, you are really good looking and stuff. I'm always saying, you know, like, you know, wow, you know, you're really handsome and Luke's like, oh, I am not. Stop being ridiculous. And, like, um, I looked it up and, like, it was, like, I was on the same website and it says, Irish guys, if you... I don't know what this website was saying, but it says, if you go up to an Irish guy and you're just like, oh my gosh, you're so unbelievably good looking, I cannot control myself. Like, you're so hot or you're so amazing. Like, you look, your rugged good looks are, you know, it's like I'm about to faint. If you're like, oh my gosh, you're amazing. And they'll just be like, it says like they, they will respond like, oh, I'm pretty average. You know, I'm nothing. I'm not anything. And then they'll just be like, uh, then they'll be like, oh, is there something you needed? Like they will just not take a compliment at all. Like they just don't, like even if you tell them that they, you know, you think that they look nice or that they are handsome, like they will not even believe you. Even if they are, even if they look like Fabio or whatever, they will not even, they will not even like acknowledge it like they'll just be like uh yeah no I'm not and so I was like so I was like okay so many things on this like completely make sense now like like Luke is just he's just he's very Irish so in a good way though as like uh and obviously in a good way obviously so yeah all right guys let's ready up everyone um, yep, anyone can play. My name online is, uh, is, uh, K-Wife. Well, you and Luke didn't know I was upstate New Yorker before I moved to Hawaii either. Yeah, we didn't realize that, Vic. It's very cool. Oh, wow. That's very cool, uh, Timothy. Aside from my grandfather on my dad's side being Scottish, my grandmother was Hungarian. My mom's entire family is from El Salvador. Oh, wow, Timothy. Oh, yeah, that, yep, yep, it's very cool. Yeah, I remember that when you did reveal it. Oh, no, Mystery Auntie's PS4 crashed. Okay, okay, Mystery Auntie, great to see you. What about his review for Batman? Okay, all right, guys, let's ready up, everyone. So guys, I don't know if we'll go past one because I, I don't know what time it is and I don't know how long we're here, but maybe we'll go to 1.30, 1, 1 1.15, 1 1.30. I don't know how long we'll be up. There I go dancing, says uh, Joseph West. That's cool. Hey, Joseph West, how's it going? Great to see you. Oh, a lot of people are, um, oh, it's 12.50. Okay, thank you, Mr. Auntie. Thanks, Michael. It's cool. A lot of people are mixed with different nationalities. Me, on the other hand, I'm only one full ethnicity. That's all right. I mean, that's cool. Either way, I mean, it doesn't matter. I mean, a lot of people are one full ethnicity. I mean, it's just kind of like America that's kind of like all a melting pot. Honestly, a lot of people are just, um, are, you know, where their family has been for generations. And some people don't like are don't have the ability to know where they're from, which I always, I always think about that when I talk about it because I know some people aren't able to even know, which I always, uh, it's like for me like when I uh it just it's kind of dumb, but when I grew up like I didn't really know much about my Norwegian side because my mom, uh, I think she had a, I honestly think my mom had a difficult time with her in-laws, so it was hard for her to think about. 
um, I feel like there was like tension so my mom was always kind of like um, didn't want to think about it my mom uh, it was difficult um, my mom had the same kind of relationship with her in-laws as I kind of had with mine um, of kind of felt like they were always kind of looking down on her and stuff. That's kind of how I feel with my in-laws too. So I can kind of relate to how my mom is. My mom and I are very like free spirits. We're very like spunky and we don't really care about what anyone thinks. And we're both very like, we like to laugh and we like, we like to be goofy and we're weird. My mom and I are both really weird. I get my weirdness from my mom. Um, my dad is very serious. My mom is really weird. Like, my mom is weird. My mom plays video games at at 50 years old. She would sit there and play video games and sit and be like, wow, this is so clever. And my mom is just, my mom basically looks at life like, my mom basically looks at life like, why does it matter if I'm 50 years old and I'm playing, I'm trying to play a video game? Like, why does it matter? Like, I can do this at any age. Like, my mom... My mom did everything in life. My mom did everything. Like, she was everything. She traveled the world. She learned several languages. She did everything. She went to, you know, China. She almost ended up having me as a little girl in China. She worked as... On, I didn't even know what my mom did half the stuff. So that's the problem. My mom never even told me half the stuff she did. She worked. She worked in, like, science labs. She worked as a teacher. She worked in inner city schools. She went behind the Iron Curtain. My mom just basically did everything. It was just like, oh, there are rules in life? No, not for me. I'm just going to do everything. Um, my mom always would have, like, popsicles for all the neighborhood kids. And my mom, when we lived in this really poor neighborhood where it was super dangerous... And all these kids, a lot of their families, basically their families were like, some of their families were criminals, some of their families did, you know, sold substances to people, like, like, it was a really bad neighborhood I grew up in. And my mom would invite all the neighborhood kids, and there was one kid that actually, um, one girl that actually was a thief, she actually was robbing people and, you know, like she was like stealing and like she was doing all kinds of bad stuff she was like you know like involved with the wrong people and she, she used to come by and um you know like sometimes hang, you know get a free popsicle and like kind of like tease the younger kids and she would be super mean and one time she said like she would like say a bad word or swear or say something rude or or lie and my mom like most people would like be like I'm not messing with this girl like she's bad news she's criminal or whatever she was like a teenager my mom my mom literally she was never afraid of anyone she well my mom is never afraid of anyone but my mom's a lot older now um, but back in the day she she actually would she told this girl like you cannot she said you shouldn't lie and the girl's like what and she's like, you, you shouldn't lie. She's like, you need to stop lying. It's not going to help you in life. You're not going to end up in a good place in life. And also, you know, you need to stop saying bad language. And she's like, that's not, it's not going to be acceptable. If you're going to want, if you're going to get a popsicle, you're not going to be able to lie. And, you know, you should be stealing stuff. And, you know, she, she basically told her, like, you can't, she basically said certain words she couldn't say. And she told her, you know. And this girl, like, just hated my mom for a while. And then years later, like, when she was, like, older in high school, she she saw my mom later. She gave her this huge hug and, like, was just, like, thank you for, like, everything. It's like, my, like, finally somebody told her, like, you need to stop. Like, my mom wasn't afraid to tell people, like, you can't, you shouldn't be stealing stuff and lying and treating people like, you know, whatever. So, it was really interesting that I used to think my mom was kind of crazy growing up because she would always, she didn't have any problem telling people, like, even if the person was possibly in a gang or anything, like, she wouldn't even care. Like, she was just like, oh yeah, um, you need to stop doing that. Like, your mom would not be okay with you doing that. Like, my mom would just tell them outright, like, 
like just say it to them <laughs> like there'd just be this person that would be really dangerous in our neighborhood that everyone was afraid of and my mom would be like if you're gonna get a popsicle you can't lie anymore otherwise you're not gonna get a popsicle anymore it's just like I was always like what the like what are you talking about like you're gonna get like yeeted or something like I thought my gosh but yeah so my mom I get these spunky like weird personality for my mom where it's just like there are no rules um I don't need to worry about what anyone else thinks I'm just doing my own thing and I don't care like I don't um yeah so yeah I don't know where I was on the topic but yeah I don't even know what I was talking about but yeah it's just like yeah my mom was pretty amazing but most of my life I didn't know all the stuff she did so like you know, a lot of people hated my mom because they would be super jealous of her thinking like, oh, you know, like, this isn't how, you know, you can't act, you know, you can't be like this. She's like, you know, they would think my mom was kind of like delusional or something like thinking like, oh, well, you know, you can't just tell people they can't lie. You can't just go up to a gang member and be like, you can't lie. Like, this isn't right. You can't just do that. But no, she did. She did. She was just like, no, you need to, you need to get your life together. Like, you have to stop doing this. <laughs> it was so weird. I've never, I've never, she's very, it's weird because my mom always called me really brave, but I, I always thought she was really brave. So, but, um, yeah, I don't even know where, where I was talking about before, but yeah, it's, I just... Yeah, so anyway, yeah, I have the same relationship with my in-laws as my mom did, where her, her in-laws would look down on her thinking she's weird, and that's how my in-laws look at me, like, they think I'm weird, but in reality, my mom's really cool, she's just not, people can't understand what she's like, because they can't imagine that she could do, they don't understand that she's supposed to, like, it's like she knows she has to do that. She has to do stuff that other people wouldn't be brave enough to do. She has to, because nobody else is doing it. That's why. Um, so, yeah. Oops. Yeah, she's, she's pretty cool, but my... Um, but yeah, I didn't even know, because my, my mother-in-law would always be, like, telling me, like, Oh, your mom never did anything for a job, and, like, your mom never did anything. Come to find out, my mom did a lot of... My mom worked at a lot of really cool jobs. I just never knew it. She never even told me. She would always be like, oh... Like, my mom would always tell me, like, oh, um... She's like, oh, no, my my only job is taking care of you guys. Like, she would just tell me that all she did was just take care of us. And, like, that's it. Like, my mom never even bragged about everything that she did, which is really weird. So, yeah, that's why I sometimes feel like... Because my in-laws family is not, sometimes I feel like, for in, like, that's what, I mean, I'm not trying to be weird or anything, but sometimes I feel like, I mean, Luke is like that a lot too, where he doesn't, and my grandfather was Scottish, he was like that a lot too, like, he never told me, like, like, oh, I always th used to think, like, wow, my grandma's, like, my grandpa's pretty cool, but, like, he doesn't really do much, he just sits around, but apparently my grandfather did all this amazing stuff and was like like they he he's in like the some kind of honored cemetery for the US government because of exploits that he it's just like my family is the weirdest family like they purposely don't tell anyone anything that they do all this stuff and then they purposely don't tell anyone that they did it like on purpose so it's like I don't even know so it's like, then when I'm pitted up against my in-laws and stuff and they're telling me, oh, your family never did anything good and they're nothing, like, you need to be more like us. Then it's like, I'm just like, oh yeah, maybe I do. And I get so thrown off. I don't even realize that, like, I don't know. That's why I'm just, like, so confused. That's why I start to think, like, that's why my whole life I start to think like Celtic people are a little bit different like than other people because they don't tell they just don't 
they're not like playing the game like everyone else they're not like bragging about everything they're doing they're not trying to one-up everyone they're just doing their own they're literally just doing their own thing they're not even they don't even care it's like they don't even it's like everyone else in the world is trying to make a name for themselves and they're like trying to not make a name for themselves it's like so weird yeah so i don't know anyway i'm just i don't know i'm just talking but yeah it's i wish my mom would have told me all the cool stuff she did because then i would have been able to say no my mom did this and this and this but no she never even told me like i my entire life growing up until i was 20 i never knew anything i didn't know that she worked at, in as in a lab i didn't know that i didn't know half of the stuff that she did like i didn't know anything that she did she didn't even tell me same with my grandpa he never like i didn't even know that he he met the dalai lama and all this stuff i never even knew he did all this stuff until after he died and then and then like and my parents never told me either and then like years later it was just like oh yeah your grandpa was like honored and stuff and it was just like really because that would have been helpful to me when all these kids were making fun of me and saying you know my family was just living in this one area and it's just like that would have been really helpful to me back then like i don't know families are weird i guess but anyway, again, we're just looking at Mary Jane. I'm just talking about whatever comes to my mind, which is usually insane. Yeah, that's why I'm trying to get back to, uh... You know, I'm just trying to get back to Illinois. I've been trying to get back to Illinois for 15 years to get back to my parents. Every year, there's something that happens, like, as soon as we started to make money for our channel, as soon as we started to make money, like, big time, and I was like, thank God, I can finally get back to my family. It's like, no, that's exactly when the, the IRS hit us with five years of taxes. And then after that, the ad apocalypse happened. I was like... It's just like every time it's like I try to get back to my family and I can't get back there. It's so frustrating. It's like uh, that hopefully it'll work out. I don't know. Mm. So yeah, um, again, guys, uh, this is uh, Mary Jane. She's a uh, new, new skin in Fortnite. Um, she, uh, she's in an all. She's an alternate Earth Mary Jane that, um, is in a rock band with uh, Gwen Stacy. As far as I know, is that. I know she's the lead singer of a rock band. I know she's in the rock band with Gwen Stacy. Whether or not Peter Parker is alive, I kind of heard Luke say he wasn't, but I don't know because he was trying to trailing off. He was kind of trailing off. Uh, so yeah. He was definitely going to, to sleep. So, yeah, that's, like, actually, that's kind of where I got the whole, like, whenever, like, I didn't know what to stream in the afternoons, and, um, I never knew what to stream, because I wasn't very good at video games, and Luke was like, oh, we need more additional streams, so, I was always like, well, why don't I just play, like, Splatoon with people, or why don't I just play this? 
I was so used to playing games with people because my mom would always like bring all the kids in the neighborhood to my house and then she would give them free popsicles and which were really not popsicles they were the 99 cent uh freeze pops which you could buy like you could buy like 40 of them for like three dollars or something like really cheap but anyway yeah like i would they would all be at our house like tons of kids every day and then like um yeah, my mom just felt like she needed to give the kids something because there were just kids walking around doing nothing. Like, just their parents weren't home. Their parents were out. A lot of their parents were out committing crimes and stuff, to be honest. And, like, they... <laughs> uh, yeah, like, they would just come to my house and... I don't know. Like, I just... Like, we would just sit there. We would... I eventually, like, my mom would be like... My mom would always say to me, can you go out and play with these kids? Like, they got free pops. Can you just go out there for, like, 20 minutes and play with them? I did when I was, like, little. And then by the time I got to high school, like, I was still out there, like, every day. Just, you know, playing with all these kids. Like, we would play four square. We would do jump rope. We would do, like, um, we would just, like, I don't know, like. We would do, like, we would do chalk drawings. We would sit there out there and draw with chalk. Like, for just hours. Um, my mom would come out and bring, like, lemonade. And we would just sit out there. And they didn't have anything to do. They they didn't have anywhere to be. There was nowhere. There's no, like, after. I don't want to say there's no after school programs in the ghetto. But there's no after school programs in the ghetto. <laughs> That's what I'm just saying. It's just like there was nothing for them to do. There was nowhere to go. Um, just sitting out there, you know, drawing. And I, we were playing. We'd play four square. We'd play. We do jump rope. I tried to learn double dutch. It was really hard. I attempted it. It was really hard. Um, but yeah, like I would just be out there, like for. Eventually, I was like out there for hours all the time. I'd have to do my. I'd go out there, I'd be hanging out with those kids, and then afterwards I would, like, come, come back in and I would, like, try to get my homework done. And, but, yeah, like, that's why, like, um, that's why, like, when Luke was like, oh, uh, I need, I need help with, you know, like, I need to do something for, you know, I need more streams. I was just like, well, I'll just sit here and play Splatoon for a couple hours. And Luke's like, oh, are you sure you're okay with that? It's like, yeah, it'll just be like, I... I'm used to playing games with people, like, I just, you know, I'm just, like, I'm just used to it, because, like, I used to do it all the time when I was younger, so it just, it just came really natural to me, um, so, yeah. Like, I actually liked it, like, I don't mind, I, I don't, I like playing Foursquare, it's fine with me. Frustrated because it's like, I don't know, it's like, one week we're working for this company, one week it's like, they're just like, you guys are doing great, and everything's on the ball. And the next week, it's like, you haven't made any... The next week, we get a letter, and it's like, you haven't met a single requirement. And, you know, you're going, you're about to be let go. You haven't made one ounce of effort. And then we, you know, like, call them, and they're just like, oh, well... What the most frustrating thing, especially for Luke and I this month, like, we call them, or Luke actually called them out on it, and was like, well, what are you saying? You said we were fine... Now you're saying nothing is right that we're doing? Like, which one is it? Like, what are you talking about? So frustrating because you have no idea what we're doing. We don't know what... We have no clue what's going on. Especially if you don't even know... How can you work for a job if you don't even know what you're supposed to do? They're just messing with you. It's like there's some kind of, like, crazy, you know, King Kong just grabbing you and just shaking you every second. Just... It's like there are some kind of crazy boss trying to make you squirm, trying to make you freak out, trying to make you... Like, they're, like, laughing by in the phone call, trying to make you, like, you know, stressed out and think that you're always doing the wrong thing all the time. It's just insane. Yeah, it's kind of like abuse in a way. It's just terrible, like, to be treated like that by a company. And it's just, like... And then Luke's, like, calling them out on it. It's like, well, what do you mean? Like, you know, you said we just need to do this, this, and this. You said we were doing all that. Now you're saying we're not doing anything you've asked for. 
you know, what, which is it? What are you talking about? And then they just respond with a smug, like, well, we can let you go for any reason at any time anyway. So it doesn't even matter. And Luke and I are just like, okay. So now we're just freaking out because it's just like, basically like ugh. Luke and I were both talking about this last night. We were just saying like, we both feel like just telling them, please just let us go. Like we literally cannot take the stress of this anymore. Like I cannot take the stress of it. I don't care how much, you know, in the future you think that we'll end up, you know, you'll help us get into conventions or anything. Like, I don't care. I don't care if you're going to, you know, help us see, you know, if you're going to have us see Miyamoto or anything, I just, please just let us go. I, it's not worth the stress. Like, I don't care. I don't care how much money it's, I can't take the stress of it. I just remember like I was watching Iron Man and it's like at the, at the end of like Iron Man two, I think it is. Pepper Potts says to, to Tony, like, please, I do not want to be the CEO of your company. Like, please, I cannot physically take the stress of it anymore. I don't know when you're going to show up. I don't know when you're going to make the U.S. government mad. I have to be the phone call all day apologizing to, you know, the president and all these people scared that they're going to take our entire company. She's like, I'm, I cannot take the stress of it. I don't know if you're going to die. I don't know if you're going to get blown up in the suit. That was like the end of Iron Man 2, I think it was. And then like, that's when he kisses her or whatever, but like, that's how I feel with like the job that Luke and I are supposedly just trying to do for a side job. It's just, it is so stressful. I literally just want them to fire me. I just don't, I cannot take it anymore. Like if they keep me on again, like I don't want to do it. And I even told Luke that I said like, I cannot, I cannot take the stress of it. I said, please, like. I was, you know, writing a letter to them just to explain, I've done everything you've asked. Like, now you're saying I'm not doing everything. I have no, like, I don't want to say I have no idea what's going on, but I just want to be like, you'd be crazy. Like, I have no clue what you're, like, you're literally just messing with me because you know we need this job. So it's just insane. Like, you, you guys are evil, basically, is what I want to say. But it's just like, I don't know. I just, I just told Luke, I was like, do you want me to just ask them to please let us go? Because... I cannot physically ask to be, I cannot even, uh, according to whatever I'm not supposed to talk about, I cannot be asked to let go. I cannot let go myself. I cannot leave or I can be sued. So it's like, I'm literally, it's so stressful. Like, I don't know. So like, yeah, that's why I've had, I've had huge headaches. Like I cannot. So yeah, but I, I appreciate Vic, you sharing all that stuff on Reddit I don't know. After this month, I really hope that I'm not not doing that job anymore. I don't want to. Like, I'm just going to work. Like Luke even said, if we don't have that job anymore, we're just going to put all our effort back into YouTube. Doing videos and we're just going to put way more effort into it. It's just like the more I do like stuff on YouTube and stuff like this, the more I realize money, views... You know, people thinking that you're really amazing because you're, you know, you have this many views or stuff. It really doesn't matter because it's not worth the stress. It's not worth the, it's just, it's just better not to sometimes. It's just like, like we were just in the, we were just talking to this guy, bank manager, because we were trying to, you know, get like a savings account to save up for house or something eventually someday. And we were talking about working on YouTube like half the time. Companies never pay you. They don't, you know, you work for them for like three months and then you're just like, oh, hey, well, where's my pay? And they're just like, oh, I just decided not to pay you. There's nothing you can do about it. Google can't make them pay you. There's nothing you can do. There's absolutely nothing you can do. There's no regulation. There's nothing. So you just have to take that as part of the job. What do you, like, the only thing you can do is... You could try to sue them yourself, but how are you going to sue them if they didn't pay you the money that you're owed? You don't even have enough money. It's impossible. So we were just telling this guy, like, we were, like, so many people always ask us, like, do you, you know, like, how can I be a YouTuber and stuff? It's like, I would not, we were all, we were always told them, do not, do not be a YouTuber. Like, please, like, the only reason we ended up doing it is because Luke got into a car accident. It's just, like, I, I just think... 
like I think a lot of times I think like oh my gosh if I could think if I could do it over again I don't know if I think I would but honestly I feel like mm, maybe that's okay like I think I think even though I think even though I don't think I would necessarily do it again it's like maybe it it all like I, I like I believe I believe everything happens for a reason so even if I think like wow I don't know I don't know if I would decide to do it again it doesn't mean I'm not supposed to be here like sometimes like in life you do things that like you wouldn't like maybe you think you wouldn't do again but you were supposed to do it anyway like because, like, if you were given the decision to do it, then you wouldn't do it. You wouldn't do the right thing. You wouldn't do what you're supposed to do. But if you get pushed into it, then it's like, oh, yeah, okay, this is where I was supposed to be. Uh, if you were given the decision, like, okay, do you want to do something that's beyond st stressful, but is going to be in, a, you know, but is going to give you the ability to, I don't know. It's just, like, sometimes you don't always make the best decisions for yourself, like, what I'm trying to say is like, maybe, maybe God has you there for a reason, even though you wouldn't, you wouldn't, maybe you wouldn't, maybe you wouldn't willingly do that again. <laughs> maybe you're supposed to be there anyway. If you were given the choice, then you would make the right choice. Maybe you're supposed to be there, but you're too stupid to realize that you were supposed to be, do that. Um, yeah, I don't know what I'm saying. Uh... Oh. Yeah, I think that's like the worst. I'd say that's the worst part of YouTube. I'd say the two worst things about working at YouTube is companies being real jerks on the phone, yelling. I hate, I hate having to work with companies that yell. It's really annoying or that get really angry or, or just acute. Like, I hate it when you work for a company and and then you've worked your tail off and they accuse you of not doing anything and then they're just like, I'm not gonna pay you. I really hate that. We work for companies several times that have done that to us, like, and it's really annoying. Like, that's actually one of the thing, I think that's the one day I punched a cereal box, I was very upset about something. Cause it's like, you spend all your hard earned work and time and then they just like, oh, I'm not doing, it's not good enough for me, I decided I'm not gonna, it's just like okay well like we did everything you asked so like we had a comp we worked we worked with a company one time that told us uh that said you know we get like a certain amount of money that we needed it was like five hundred dollars or something and we had to do a series on their game it might have been a thousand i don't know what it was but we had to do a series on their game for the month or a couple months and like I remember that this company, we had to do all these videos on their game. Like we had to make all these videos, edit them. It was hours. It was weeks. It was months, months of work. It was like a month. Of, it was months of work, honestly. And, uh, you know, we had to edit all this stuff and, you know, we really needed it because we needed to pay our taxes and stuff. I don't know. Maybe it was weeks of work. I don't remember. I'd have to ask Luke, but it was a tremendous chunk of time that we needed to do all our other videos. So time is money, as they say. You, if you're working on one thing, you can't do the rest of the stuff that gives you rent. So it was like doing this job, and I couldn't believe like like th we this was a horrible game. Like this game was terrible. I think it's still up on our channel. It was just awful. It was a game about uh, the robber guy in the game looked like the guy from. Um, cook, uh, cookie crisp or whatever, like the, yeah, like he steals the cookies in that commercial. Yeah, so th that guy looked like, um, that guy looked like the guy, um, who steals like the cookie crispies or whatever, that cereal. He looked like a cartoon robber and the game was dumb. It wasn't fun to play. It was annoying. It was poorly made. It was like a flash game. But we needed the money and we ended up doing the game. That was at the time where YouTube was just ripping the ad revenue from everyone. And so, like, we 
you know, we had to do what we had to do. And we thought, okay, we'll work with this somewhat, I don't know if I'd call them shady company, but un anyway, so work with this company and did everything they wanted, put everything they wanted in the videos, you know, and then, uh, I don't remember what it was. Like we didn't write something in the video or we didn't say it in the right way they wanted or we didn't say one like we said we said the phrase they said they wanted in the video but we didn't say it exactly we missed one word or something in all the video I don't know what it was but it was something where Luke had to go re-edit everything and it took like weeks more time like we did we re-edited everything we took every like all the 25 videos re-edited all of them again like it took hours if not weeks like to do and it was so annoying and like they were obvious like we had to do the work twice and then after that they said it still wasn't good enough that that we needed to edit one more thing into it. so it was like well why didn't you tell us that last time like you know I don't know I'm just I'm just complaining now but it was so weird because after all that they said they weren't gonna pay us I just remember that was so frustrating. I hated that. It was so annoying. So many times, like, certain things that Luke and I have had to do for YouTube, especially when ad revenue is down and we needed a certain thing for our rent or something. Like, when ad revenue is good, it's good. But then when you need, when you need the ad revenue and it's not there, you end up having to work for companies that are not the nicest. And it's just like, a few times, like, Luke and I have literally almost, like, cried, like, together because it was so frustrating. Because <laughs> it was so, you know, annoying. But other than that, YouTube is great. Like, I love working on YouTube because sometimes, like, people ask me, like, well, would you want to be a YouTuber or would you suggest doing this? Like, no, I would not. I would not. I wouldn't wish, I wouldn't wish to get on somebody else. I, but, I mean... I mean, at the same time, if I really could choose again, if I would do it or not, if I would choose to do it, I probably, I say I wouldn't choose it, but honestly, I probably would. Because, like, uh, I would miss the opportunity to try it, even though it was terrible, even though it was really frustrating and hard. At least I could try it. I could do something interesting. Like, I, I could try an adventure. Like, like this year, everything... Mm, company may not treat me very nice or things can be frustrated but next year everything could be amazing so like it's always like the future it could always be better the next year you always just have to keep trying the next time but anyway sorry for uh, bla uh blabbing on oh thank you for the super chat mystery ent before we end the stream and then we'll go this is why i don't this is why i don't do streams on my own i'm very i'm very weird philosophical person i I don't I don't do well with others. I don't work well with others. Um, I'm always a little bit depressed. Um, I I definitely Kirby cheers me up a lot. So Kirby games, you see me always happy with Kirby. So, all right, guys. Um, thank you so much for uh watching today's stream. Thanks for I show off uh, Mary Jane. Um, sorry for making everyone depressed because I was like droning on about my life. Next time you'll find Luke here. Um, so he'll do a way better job than me and uh, at least I streamed uh, I really do care about you guys a lot you guys have been like a family to me um, in you know in yeah anyway so anyways um, yeah there's a lot of things that like happened like I wasn't just money that I wasn't able to get to my family I was also you know, like somewhat, I was technically, I don't like to say this because my, my in-laws treated me even worse, but my family did technically disown me. So it was, it was, it's been very hard 10 years to me. Like every year that I've been on Let's Play channel has been hard for me. Like I, it's always been hard for me, but I just never even talked about it. It's just, it just gets harder all the time. But yeah, but anyway, like I said, um, thanks so much for watching, uh, the thing of Mary Jane, um, 
you know, uh, I hope everyone has a great night. Please don't, please don't be like, I talk to my mom like all, every night. She always says, don't, don't come to Illinois. I'll be fine. She's always saying, you know, like everything's fine. I just really worry about it a lot. It's hard for me. So don't, don't worry about it thinking like I'm in a terrible situation. I'm probably just thinking way too hard about things. But um, thank you for the kind words, Mystery ENT and uh, Cyber Rogue and Chad and, and Vic and everyone. Um, I really appreciate that. And uh, I will see you guys um, next time. I'm going to go up and see if Luke is awake. And if not, I will see Luke at around 9 in the morning to record. So have a wonderful night, everyone. Uh, Mary Jane from Alternate Earth as a rock star is in Fortnite, and um, we will see you guys tomorrow with more Kirby and Star Wars. Lego Star Wars. Okay, guys, have a great night, and hopefully there will be uh, Mario Kart Fridays tomorrow. God bless. Happy gaming. See you guys. Have a great night.